I've been using this Supernote Nomad since last Christmas, and it's rapidly become my favorite e ink device. Even though I've been an avid fan of the Kindle Scribe and a Remarkable 2 user for many years, Supernote Nomad offers the closest feeling to the sensation of writing or drawing on paper of any e paper tablet. This is thanks to the Feelrite 2 screen technology and the ceramic tips you never need to replace. There's even a new drawing app, which is fantastic. Also, the company that makes these, Rata, provides free cloud storage, unlike Remarkable. And best of all, it has user replaceable parts, which means three things. You can upgrade components over time as newer, better ones come out. Two, if something breaks, you can fix it yourself. And three, most importantly, this modularity will reduce e-waste in the long term. Despite our phones and tablets slowly becoming much more powerful, most people actually find that they reduce creativity and the ability to get into a flow state. The A6 X2 Nomad is a very focused device with the sole purpose of improving your productivity. Do you think that at a certain point, one of these e-paper slash e-tablet manufacturers will copy the framework design? Oh, that's an interesting point. I mean, it would it would make sense with it when you've got two companies like Remarkable and Supernote who have really made that part of their marketing. They made that made that statement out there. You know, this is a um, ecological decision to buy into this ecosystem. Yeah, no, I think that's a really excellent point to make because um, the e ink screens they they've got long lifespans. This might be the old e ink screen here on the Remarkable, but um, it doesn't stop it looking crisp and clear and nice and it's attractive to write on. Yeah, so why not? I mean, imagine if you could in two, three years throw a new screen in this thing, you know? Yeah. Or four years later, your battery is starting to wear and you can just swap your battery out. Well, that's going to be interesting to see with the new um, EU rolling that batteries have to be replaced with. All right, I can't even describe how excited I am to open this. Ever since Supernote teased all the modularity and the whole kind of nomadic aspect of it. I really knew it was gonna be something I was gonna be into. All right, so first, let's take a look at the folio. I got the white version. It'll be interesting to see if this thing gets dirty or not. Nice big pen loop. Now to the pens that I got, that's, that's gonna be addictive. <laughs> so I got the standard pen here, and then I also got the Odyssey blue here, it should be. Ooh, look at that ceramic nib. Supposed to be 0.7 millimeters, nice and thin. I'll be completely honest, I had seen Super Notes, but they never really appealed to me before the Nomad. Just look how much nicer that is than the Remarkable Pen, for example. This really feels like a stylus marker. This feels like a proper, proper pen. I guess I didn't even really need this knife. That is so cool. If you follow my channel at all, you know that probably the first thing I'm gonna do is tear this down. Now, full disclosure, because of my interest in e-ink tablets and things like the framework that are sustainable and modular, I'm very passionate about upgradability and the right to repair. So this was right up my alley. I did reach out to Rada. This is absolutely a device I was going to purchase, but I figured I'd try to reach out to them and see if they would uh, be willing to offer a unit for me to try out. Now, I will see you in the future, hopefully, when I've used this thing for six months. So while devices like the Remarkable are great and they have a lot of value, you know, this one has the type folio and everything, it is incredibly thin, right? And this is kind of where the industry has pushed the, the standards. So this is 4.7 millimeters. And in a couple years, this will likely become a paperweight of some sort. That's where the kind of more eco-conscious Nomad design Perhaps this is because of EU laws. I made a whole video about the kind of state of repairable tech now. So perhaps it is because of that that they got ahead of it. But cool thing about the Nomad is whenever a part dies or uh, just gets old or your battery is kind of getting out of its charge cycles, you can replace that. It allows for a lot of customization. Like I customized this, uh, this pen here and maybe cases that'll have lights in them, solar cells, the sky's really the limit. And Rada is working on accessories. I did a, a video about accessories uh, that we could see. E-waste is rapidly going to become one of the largest environmental disasters. There's already about 50 million tons of e-waste per year. It's actually rising, it's even higher than that now. 
but devices like these are going to be devices that reduce that impact. I've been super happy using it for the past six months, and this is just a really cool device, very portable, but yeah, the nomadic aspect of it fits in your travel pocket super easily. Well, I intended to shoot outside, but there were too many noises and the birds had other plans. So we're back inside here. Now, this is in my opinion where some of the real power of the Super Note comes. What you can see is that right here, this I've actually added as a heading. So if I go here, I can see all my headings. And I can also star things. So if like homework was very important, it recognizes it as a star. And then here I can go to that. It shows on that page I put a star. And then keywords. This isn't a feature I use super often, but if you are someone that uses a lot of keywords for different parts of your notes, that is very useful to use. The headings I find very useful. And then if I just tap on one of these, so if I wanna go like, oh, let's talk about Atelier. It's on page 13 out of 16. And because I made that a heading, it just takes me right there. Very, very powerful kind of workflow for organization. And because also the OCR is happening in the background, like this page, for example, decent amount of notes here, it's immediately converted into character recognition. And because it does that in the background, this is all searchable. I can actually just search the whole document. So int, right? Laptop integration, Intel Tech Meteor. Boom, I'm on that page. For example, I wanna show you my accessories video I did. So if I go to accessories here, these you'll see here are all little hyperlinks. So when I circle something, let's say I circle this, I can make that a hyperlink and I can link it to a multitude of things. So I can do another page in this file, I can do some other recent files, other files or a web page. So let's go back here. So for this, for example, I linked it to a PNG of an Atelier file I built uh, this, I mocked something up for like a light accessory and it, uh, let me clean that up. I mocked it up for a light accessory and I was able to link to that. Here, if uh, we were to see a solar cell folio, I mocked up what that could look like. But that is just the power of the Supernote platform. It's that real-time recognition, so everything's searchable. It's the ability to do good bullet journaling or create headings, keywords, table of contents just incredibly useful and really well thought out in terms of the flow. And also, let's say I circle this again. This is how you create a heading. You just pop it here, tap one of those, and then it will turn into something like that. Here's another view where I can quickly, I'll use my left hand so you can see better. I can quickly flow into different pages. So for this one, for example, you can actually even link to websites. So on the Nomad here, uh, I just link to the Nomad page. And for example, I'm just on the website now. You can imagine if you were doing like a live presentation, you could quickly just screen mirror this, give everyone this URL, boom, then you're presenting stuff. And these are like almost like little slides, right? You can start talking about stuff. You can start live annotating stuff like Just really, really powerful stuff. Look, that's, actually I never even noticed that. That's so cool. I'm not touching the screen. So it does, just like my phone does, it does the hovering feature. So you'll see there's a little, I don't know if you can see, but I'm hovering and it shows where my pointer is. I did not know that it had that. That that's probably helps with the palm rejection too, watch. I'm hovering and the dot's there. And then let's go do a speed test. Look how quick it is. This is in real time. It's almost immediate. Obviously as reliable as your Wi-Fi connection is, but just insanely cool. And the fact that you don't even need an app, you can just put this on any device and you can mirror to it is great in my opinion. Now one thing I will probably make a whole separate video about is templates, because I do plan on making my own. So if you have any questions about that, more workflow stuff or organization, leave them below, and I'll try to cover that stuff in the video I make. The kind of uh, built-in ones are good. There's a, a couple, three pages here of kind of preset ones. So this is the new to-do task list that they've added. It's actually a good opportunity for me to show you the keyboard too working. 
And so I did a little test here, and now we can add something like test run. And you can choose a date. So let's do that by like tomorrow. Add it, and then that'll show up in a to-do list. And I believe, let's get back to a note here. They've added it now to this, uh, here's a gesture here. Two fingers on the screen will allow you to lasso something and then give you some smart options. And actually two fingers here circling will delete, or you can just cross something out too and it will delete. And so I can backspace there. But so let's say I lasso it and I believe now you can add it as a to-do list. The ability that you can install your own Android apps on here is really nice. It gives you the option to do pretty much anything that's an Android app. Not all apps are gonna work well, obviously, but it gives you the ability to try and to test them out, which is nice. Because it is a custom kind of Android skin, so it's already running Android anyways. They are adding Linux support. Uh, they're gonna have a way to dual boot. For the Kindle app, you should note this doesn't have a front light, so it's not the most ideal for reading unless you're like outside and it's really sunny, or if you have a light with you but it is nice that you can have access to all your Kindle books and it works quickly, works well, and is nice to have built in here. The ability to sync to Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive is really cool too. One of the first things I wanted to talk about is planned obsolescence. So something like the SuperNote or the Framework 16 here that I have, they really give you the option to upgrade components over time and I think for the SuperNote, this Nomad specifically, that's gonna be very important in terms of the actual SOC here. So in a few years, we could potentially see something like the GPU in the Books devices, which is a Books Super Refresh. It's a proprietary technology they have. And basically what that does is there's a graphics card or GPU that allows to remove ghosting from the device. And so it basically refreshes pretty quickly. On the Nomad, you can swipe up to clear ghosting, but that's an inherent issue with the e-ink technology as it's moving the micro capsules to the surface when you're kind of changing the page or writing. That is one of the inherent drawbacks of the technology. So while it is bi-stable and everything stays on the surface as you do change something or write something, one of the issues is ghosting and the slow refresh rate. And so something like a GPU that could potentially be in the SOC in the future could be something that you could just swap out. You could upgrade it yourself and then SuperNote could integrate that technology, whether they release that or a third party company does. And then the battery as well. This is a 2.7K milliamp hour battery, but you know, you could see a case that has an integrated battery that is much bigger, uh, solar cells, something like that. And perhaps kind of like the Intel, AMD, and Apple chips now have, we could even see like an MPU in the future. An MPU is a neural processing unit, and that is something that offloads pretty demanding tasks in a very efficient manner. So something like the background optical character recognition or perhaps some other aspect of the device, that could be something that could be upgraded in a couple of years if they come out with something like that and would help increase battery life, for example. But the cool thing is these are all options of something that could happen here. We don't really know what will happen, but the sky's the limit here, like that could happen. Devices like the Remarkable, you really get what you have now. And this has eight gigabytes of storage, for example, this has 32. This micro SD card can go up to two terabytes, which is awesome. So you'll never really have to worry about storage on this thing. It's unclear to me if Rada did this because of the EU laws that are coming out, or perhaps it was because of the issues they had with their previous A5X and sourcing some of those components. So that was a sealed design, but over time from what I understand, if you look at their website, they don't even sell it anymore. And part of that is that some of the components inside of it became no longer available. And so maybe that's why they did it. Maybe it's a, to get around the EU battery laws that are coming up. But bottom line, the A5X2, for example, will have a very similar design to this probably. They've teased a photo of it. 
and I'm sure it'll use the same SOC, but it will probably have a maybe a bigger battery just because it's a bigger device. But that one will be certainly exciting to take a look at too. This is also just really reminiscent of a kind of fun period of technology when things were just kind of see-through and you could see all the components. We've started to see like some resurgence of that. I think the Freewrite released a ghost edition and just really cool to kind of see that. It was just a much more fun period of technology. So by far my favorite accessory that I've found that kind of works with this is this Dr. Grip pen I used as a donor pen. There was a grip here and there's still a little cushion under here so it's still functional. But I put it here. It actually fits perfectly on the edge with a little lip here. And then I just uh, snipped it a little bit. It was extended because it wasn't able to fit this way. So you need to have actually it to go up that way. And when there was extra, you couldn't go up enough to get it in, but now it works perfectly. I use this little ruler that's a nice size for it a lot for straight lines. They don't have straight line snapping like the Remarkable does there. I'm hopeful that's something they'll add soon, but in the meantime, I've just been using this little ruler that I find makes me a lot neater when kind of creating on here. And then this little stand that I have here, I always bring this with my laptop as a laptop stand, but sometimes I find it nice I can have my laptop and then have this kind of propped up next to it. If I just want to use this as a reference document or if I'm drawing on it, it's a nice little kind of easel. The last one is this Targus fold-out keyboard that uh, pairs immediately. And then if I'm editing a doc on here, I can do typing, kind of like the remarkable type folio. And it just makes it kind of like a digital typewriter. The experience typing on here isn't the best. It's very basic. There's no like font support or size support or anything like that. But it is cool that you can do that with a Bluetooth keyboard that's like 25 bucks or something. Also, I just use this little light that I've had, kind of like a book light. There's also a Reddit user that posted about a light he uses, and I've been using that one too, which is great. I would be surprised if Supernote didn't make a light accessory soon. I think one of the biggest realizations for me was how much better my actual handwriting is on the Nomad, and that's in comparison to like a Scribe or a Remarkable, and I think part of it is because of the glossy surface here. So like the Remarkable marker, it is a felt graphite tip and it does have that like sound and kind of texture of being a actual, you know, pencil or something on paper, but it doesn't give you as much feedback because it is a glass surface. So for me at least, I can just write a lot neater on the Nomad and that is because it feels like you're pressing into the grain of something and it gives you a little bit of feedback. So I'll do a little writing comparison and pay attention to the sound, but then also the actual neatness of my writing. This is really thanks to Feel Right 2 and the paper-like texture and grain that Wacom has developed in collaboration with Rada here. All right, so I'm gonna put the microphone right here in the middle, and I'm first going to write on the Remarkable with a fine liner. And now we are also on a fine liner here, kind of a middle setting here. So I'll do it once with the Heart of Metal pen, and then I'll go with this one. You see how there's just less like jiggle in the writing? Now, let's try with this. The folio itself is great. The magnets are quite strong. I've never had my Nomad slide out of it. I got the white version. There is also a blue one and a kind of gray, like non-leather one. Uh, this is a vegan leather and 
you know, it, it will pick up some marks and uh, get a little bit of a patina, if you will, but it's not that difficult to clean it. The pen loop is much larger from what I understand on this version than the previous one. And that's to accommodate for some of the pens that I'll talk about in a little bit that are newer pens and uh, is just a universal kind of fitting. One of the nice things about having the magnets at the top and also having a non-magnetic pen loop here is that some of the devices like the Kindle and the Remarkable, because of the technology of where the magnets attach the folio and the magnets for the pen here, some of the edge support isn't the greatest. There'll be little gaps there sometimes. Wacom styluses, they're called Wacom EMRs. It's electromagnetic resonance. And so some of that interference is due to the actual technology itself. So pretty ironic there, but that will not be an issue here. The standard push-up pen, while it does have that rattle, you will not notice that when you're writing. And so this has quickly become my favorite pen. It just is really good for sketching and just gives me a little bit of a better grip on it. I found it to be a little bit kind of slippery at first, but one oversight I think with the push-up pen is that the little knob here that slides into the kind of folio loop, it doesn't go all the way down. So it is a little easier to slip off. Still better than a magnetic pen, but the heart of metal pen, for example, here, you know, if I, uh, if I loop it in, you'll see that it goes fully. And so this is much harder to pull out. Now, speaking of the heart of metal pen, I, this is a really cool pen. Uh, I love this color and it just feels super premium. Like it's pretty crazy to me that this is almost half the price of this. My remarkable marker, for example, I didn't drop it, but on the tip here, the actual part that holds the nibs broke somehow. And so I have to get a new marker. Like this one was 100 when I bought it, and now I think it's like 130 or 140, which is just insane, given that this is like a much nicer pen than this. That kind of brings me to my next point about the ceramic nibs. These you never have to replace, and they just offer way more fine point control. The one thing about the Heart of Metal Pen 2 here for me is that I cinch up on my pen more and so I find the weighting to be a bit too back heavy. And this is all personal preference, but if you're someone that writes more back here, then I think you'll find the weight better distributed. But what I do is I just keep the top in the loop here and then when I pull the pen out, I write like this and I find the weighting to be great for my writing style. And then it's kind of nice too. I can just pop it back in here and I actually just never need to take it out of the loop. So kind of cool. But by far one of the coolest parts of the Supernote is the ability to try and adapt your own pens to the Supernote platform. They sell kind of refill ceramic ballpoint nibs. There are people that have made kits online, so I'm definitely gonna explore that and I'll probably do a separate video of adapting it to something like this G2 where I can have a push-up style, but have it feel really premium and just have like an amazing grip on it. Or the Dr. Grip pen that I pulled this from, try to adapt that too. So I'm excited to, to try to check that out. And then they have some other ones like the Lamy pens I was talking about. They are way thicker. Lamy is a pretty big pen manufacturer from Germany and those will fit in this big loop. There's also a really cool one they make called the Lamy Twin EMR Safari, I believe, that is a two-in-one and has a regular pen nib and a ceramic pen nib. Now Atelier, the drawing app is really fantastic. I did a whole video on this, it was like 20 minutes. I separated it because this video would have been way too long if I had added that. But I also interviewed an illustrator and got his opinion on that. So you can check that out if you'd like. So everyone, this is Kevin. He is a illustrator and sketcher. This is your first kind of e-ink tablet that you sketched on, correct? Yes. What are your thoughts on just the whole e-ink um, tablet? I think I'm amazed by it. I'm, I'm really impressed the way how it works just like a pencil. The one thing I didn't mention though in the actual review of Atelier was kind of the actual output of it. I talked about how you can get it here. It is uh, pixel based versus being vector based, but the one downside I've found is that like, let's say I zoom in here. It still looks 
relatively like a sketch, but when I zoom in here, you really start to see that pixelation a lot. And it, you know, it looks good, I think, from an outside perspective. I would like to see it maybe sharpened up a little bit. And maybe this is nitpicking because I don't think anyone's really zooming in that much, but if I were to blow this up and make it like a much larger image, that would be something that would be noteworthy. They are going to add, I think, Photoshop layers. So the layers that I have in here at some point will be preserved and then you could do that in like Photoshop or, or an equivalent software. Really quickly for pricing, the Nomad itself, this crystal one is 329, the white one's 299. And basically, if you're kind of curious the difference of those, this one allows for a little more customization. You can imagine the outside here that peers to the top, you can customize. Let's say if you got like a blue one or something, you could match your pen, or perhaps someone will even make a folio that's integrated into the back, something like that. But the white one has little pull tabs on it, so it is easier to access if you're gonna be kind of pulling out your memory card all the time. This one you do need to pull 18 screws out, so it is a little bit of an ordeal to get into. And the folio is 69, and the canvas folio they have is 49. This pen is 59, and the heart of metal is 79, and then I believe there's a samurai one that's a little more expensive and is 89. All the links below are Supernote affiliate links. If you're finding this useful, that's a helpful way to kick back to the channel at no additional cost to you. Generally, in terms of the pricing, Rata does not discount these devices. The prices are always just flat, kind of like the Remarkable. The Amazon Kindle is something that you can find for a lot cheaper because Amazon's a massive company and they can afford to discount that hardware because they're selling a lot of books. So just know that these will not really go on sale. Scrolling down here will bring you your quick menu where you can have quick access to notes. This is great, it really allows you to kind of customize it for yourself. There's also a calendar here, which is really useful. You can sync it to your Google Calendar as well. It's nice that there's a companion app for the Supernote, and this is still kind of in beta, but the one thing I'll say about it is nice, you know, you can kind of do everything that you would want to do, kind of like the Remarkable app down here. But I will say, I think they need to kind of unify the OS between the phone app and this app. I don't believe there's an iPhone app out yet, but it is nice that you can access all your notes from here on your phone or on your laptop. It just makes it so that if you ever forget this, you have access to everything. One thing I'd like to see would be the ability to edit them. So a lot of phones like this and laptops now have pen support. So it'd be really cool to be able to continue my experience uh, on my phone or on my laptop. The battery life's pretty good. I get about a week, week and a half, and I do use this daily. It does have a quick USB-C charging here, so I find it to really not be an issue. And you should know that this is the worst the battery life will ever be, because in the future we'll have more efficient chips, we'll probably have higher density batteries, so it's only gonna get better over time. I do use some of the more advanced features, so perhaps that is digging a bit into my battery life, but I find it to be generally pretty good. It's not as good as my Remarkable. This I charge every like three weeks or something, but I also have been using this less now. I end up using this kind of more for big picture stuff and the Nomad for like daily minutia kind of organization things. So this is seeing a lot more use than my Remarkable right now. One thing I think they need to clean up in the software is your file management. If I go to my notes file, there's some docs, and then there are atelier files in here. I think that in the notes file, that should be just where your notes go. PDF support's nice, it just makes it super easy to mark up stuff, right? And they do now have landscape support. So because this is a smaller screen, having that is really nice because it makes it something a little bit more like this size. If you compare it here, it's exactly the same size. So it's basically like a bit, a, a bit more than a half page of something on the Remarkable. It is cool because when you do the half page, it splits it. So the gesture will just keep going and show me half, half, half. So it makes PDFs much more usable on something this size.
Getting into some of the competition, the Remarkable is probably the biggest direct competition, I'd say, to the Supernote platform. Obviously, size-wise, it's not a direct competitor. It'll be a direct competitor to the A5X2 when that comes out in the fall. But the Remarkable has, I would say, a much smaller learning curve. It's just very easy to open it, download the latest update, and you're off with your notes, and it's just easy to organize and whatnot. The Supernote, there's a little bit more of a learning curve, but it is much more customizable to your needs. It's a very powerful device, but these are certainly the two kind of flow champion devices where they don't really distract you with anything. They are just very focused and distraction-free devices. I do think you end up paying a little bit more for the potential of the customization here. Just like my framework laptop here, I ended up paying a good amount for this, but I'm gonna be able to own either of these for five to 10 years, so I know that it's gonna be a good value proposition over time. The Kindle Scribe is kind of a midpoint where it is probably the best bang for the buck device you can get. It's certainly the cheapest if you find it on sale. Prime Day is coming in a month, so it'll absolutely go on sale then. If you just want a really solid all-around device and are kind of entering this market, that is certainly a good one. The books devices, on the other hand, they do have black and white ones too, but they also offer color Kaleido 3E ink, which is kind of a newer technology that's getting pretty good. And those are more productivity powerhouses. So those are much more of like a full-fledged tablet Android experience and are certainly the opposite of these flow devices. So you kind of really have to gauge what your needs are and figure out which one is ultimately better for what you want to do in your workflow. I hope you found this long-term review useful of the Nomad. It's a fantastic little device. I've been loving my ownership experience with it. If you have any comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you. But uh, thanks for watching. And I'll put some more content here on the Nomad if you'd like to see it.